be demonstrating my process that I did for this painting called Flathead River. It is a 24 by 30 inch painting of a river that flows through Glacier National Park. This is the finished product I wanted to show at the beginning so that you could see what I'll be working on. Here I'm showing you the photograph that I'm using as my reference material. And next to it is a six by eight inch study that I did to see if I in fact wanted to even do this particular scene. I liked the way it turned out, so I continued on with the larger piece. Before starting a piece, I always look at my color wheel to determine which color scheme would work best for the particular landscape I'm about to paint. I determine what the dominant color is in the scene and go from there, looking at the color wheel and deciding which of the schemes would work best. In this particular piece, you can see from the photograph and the study, there was a lot of blue-green in the water, in the sky, and even in the trees. So I chose a tetrad color scheme from the color wheel, uh, blue-green, violet, yellow, and red-orange. The tube colors I used are cobalt violet for the violet, cadmium yellow medium for the yellow, cadmium red medium for the red-orange because it is a very orange, warm red, and for the blue-green, I used three different tube colors, cobalt blue, thalo green, and cobalt teal. So those are the colors on my palette that I use. In this clip, you can see I am painting a linear drawing over the charcoal drawing that I did and laying in the different shapes that are made in the uh, distant hills there in the sky, in the trees. The underpainting is an important part of your painting process. You want to make sure that you know what you're going to put where. And I myself personally find that laying in the darks very specifically so that I know exactly where they're going to be really helps me to move around the painting and end up with a more cohesive design when it comes to the lights and the darks, the different values of the colors. So whenever I start a painting, you'll always see me do this underpainting of the entire scene. And then I get started on the particulars. Here I've moved on to the sky area. I am going to start with the lightest value of the sky that butts up to the distant mountains. So I'm laying in some spots of white and then I move into the lighter blue and the darker blue as I go up away from the mountains. keeping in mind the different shapes that the different values of color make to make it look a little bit more of an impressionistic, almost abstract sky.
In this clip, I've started painting in the beautiful water. It had so much light reflecting off of it and all of the beautiful colors of the sky. So I'm bringing a lot of that same color down into the water, the blues and a little bit of the yellow, the blue-green, all keeping in mind of the different shapes that each of those values will be making within the river. In this section of the river, there were a lot more rapids going down in front of us. And so I have switched my brush stroke to a more wavy stroke to show the different waves and wave shapes that come through the rapids. Okay, now I've moved on to the land area that is above the river, and it goes from a kind of a dirt, rocky area that's in mostly sun, and then it gradually goes into the grassy, weedy area that is mostly in shadow. So from the right to the left, I go from it being in a little bit of sun to getting darker and more greener with the different weeds and grasses that are on the bluff there.
On this clip, I'm putting in the darkest darks of the mountain shapes, using blues in different values, but most of them dark. Shadow shapes are generally cool, so that's why I chose that blue color. Now here I've added a little bit of the blue-green that I used down in the water.
In this clip where I'm doing the foreground brush area, you will see that I use almost all of the colors of the palette within that area because it is such a mishmash of trees and bushes and sticks and leaves and sand from the river. It's all just mixed together there. So I've chosen to use the purples and the greens and the yellows and all of the colors of my palette all together to form that landmass. I am towards the end of the painting when I stepped back and looked at the finished product I thought there should be some more warm light on those middle ground trees so I'm using the cadmium yellow medium to depict that sunlight shining on that group of trees in the middle ground and so here it is again the finished product I'm so glad you were able to watch me demonstrate my technique and I hope that it inspires you to get going and doing one. If you do, send it to me. I'd love to see it. Happy painting!